Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and here I'm going to update you and show you kind of where I'm at with uh, this 68 Cornet RT from uh, MPC. And uh, this is this is a fun kit and a great kit. And I know a lot of people have really been wanting to see this kit or even the hardtop kit come out. And I'm looking forward to that hardtop kit as well. But um, um, for those that aren't familiar with it, this is a brand new tool um, that's pretty much engineered off of the original. I've got uh, a video showing an original kit of this and comparing it to this new release. You can see all the subtle upgrades and changes that uh, they incorporated into this to make it easier to build because MPC kits are really not known for their fit and everything and they really take some work. But with MPC, the older the version you get, the better it is because usually, you know, fresh out of the mold and haven't been uh, retooled and whatnot. Um, so the earlier kits are always better, but this is one that it only had one run and then it was retooled into the 69 and retooled into the 70 and the 70 has been popped a few times. Uh, one time original uh, later with a different chassis and it's been reissued a couple of times with that chassis, but some MPC kits have been repopped and repopped and repopped and the tooling gets worn out. This one, the tooling was lost to upgrades and changes. Um, so this is an all new kit. So uh, take a moment and check out our sponsor, um, Hobby Nut Models. Uh, they've got this kit or currently when I checked their website last, um, they, they got some in stock and I'm sure this thing's selling out really well. And, and I hope it does. I really do. Because I would like to see more kits like this in the future. Like they've announced the um, Demon Kit, the, the original 71 Demon Kit. Um, and that's the same thing. It's going to be a retool of the original so all new tooling but be a lot like the original so uh looking forward to that and i'm sure uh market hobby nut models are going to get his hands on that as well so keep keep on that but um uh this is just i'm i'm enjoying this especially when i've been through restoring a couple of these vintage kits or trying to collect the vintage parts so this really has the vintage kit feel but fits a lot better from everything I've test fitted. And it's just turning out to be um, a real pleasure to build. And uh, I don't have any um, issues so far. Uh, some things are a bit intimidating. I did do a video, if you haven't seen the video, um, last weekend of me putting that stripe on the back and how to do it, because it's three pieces and it's a bit intimidating. But as you can see, it came out really nice. And this thing, it's ready for clear. Um, I was working on a couple more kits, so hopefully I'll be able to clear three kits this weekend. Uh, we'll see about that, but I'm just enjoying to build this out of the box without really beating it up um, with super detailing it or anything like that. I even decided to leave these marker lights alone just to see how they're going to look when it's completed, uh, foiled and everything. Because, you know, compared to the original, these are much farther back um, and then... What I remember from ones I've seen is that it's actually much farther forward and the original one has it much farther forward too. But, you know, I'm no real expert on exactly where that goes, um, but I'm just going to leave it alone and, and do it as is. Um, same with the, the hood where it's, it's this body line is kind of missing uh, on this hood. And so far, the only thing, you know, I kind of wish this had the side pipes in it because it's kind of fun the more i've been playing with this kit the more fun it would be to actually build this super b convertible concept car that was the original box art which is what this simulates but this has all the coronet rt and not the super b stuff but that's really the only piece that's missing is those side pipes but you know here's the body um haven't really done much else to this so we'll move this aside but for the rest of it i decided since this all fits pretty snugly and there's not a whole lot of gaps I'm going to go the over restored route again, which I kind of like, and especially when it's a pretty decent chassis. So I shot the whole thing red. This has not been cleared either. And uh, the inside of the inner fenders here, which, you know, mimic the original, some accuracy issues, some not, but that was in the original. So they kind of left some things alone, like uh, where the control arms go in here and the suspension, that's all missing. Um, there's just some issues, the torsion bars and the simplicity of all of this, um, which, you know, mimics the original kit, which I kind of like that too, is it's, it'll look like one of the originals, but not exactly. It goes together better. Everything fits a little bit better. 
um, but the accuracy, you know, for being all new tooling, it's kind of hard to say, hey, why didn't they go a little bit farther? But they did make a lot of improvements, like having the full rear wheelhouse and fitting snugly against the inside of the body um, and then everything there. And then plus the actual locating pins here that even the chassis has and, you know, the firewall glues to this and those fit snugly. And then once you get it all lined up, everything just mates up real, real nice. So, and then this chassis came out so nice. I don't think I'm actually going to clear coat it. I'll clear coat the body and the hood, but these two parts I'll leave alone. Plus another thing, this uh, radiator support, it has a pin so you know exactly where it goes and turn it around and put it the right direction. So the other one kind of didn't, you just glued it here and it can go either way. But uh, that was the original. But you know, these are all fitting really nicely and square and all my mock-ups seem to be going really well. So we'll just set that stuff aside. Um, same thing with the engine. The engine has a lot of the original vibe to the kit not the most accurate engine and uh you know i shot some primer on it and i shot uh chrysler turquoise which is correct on these motors uh in 68 they weren't red on the big blocks that didn't happen until 69 but um still came out nice there's the oil pan is a separate part so there's no seam in the middle of the oil pan but it has like literally no block detail no freeze plugs i don't know what those are supposed to be because they weren't really cross bolted and that's not where the freeze plugs go only the hemis were cross bolted but um you know just some simplistic stuff starter the oil filter the valve covers with the breathers are not really in the correct spots but you know and the exhaust manifolds and the exhaust manifolds on this are way wrong um but i'm just leaving it alone and building it the way it is and i didn't paint the interior tub I'm trying to decide on what color so i mean i got those parts ready i did uh glue the seat backs in got them ready to be painted the original kit these were molded in they weren't a separate part but uh those are there separate seat back and then the door panels and i'm really leaning towards doing tan interior to go with the red um thought about possibly doing white interior but my other 68 convertible is blue with a white interior so i think i'm gonna do tan um, I could do black interior, which would look great against the red and the black stripe. But, you know, a lot of muscle cars have black interior, and I love black interior. But um, I think this one needs a bit more detail. Got a pretty nice dash. It actually has the 68 round knobs um, and the radio there. So some nice details in here. Not, nothing on the top of the dash. Uh, the bumpers, which have no dates on them. I kind of wish they had the molded in dates, but they got it on the decal sheet. So there's that rear bumper, front bumper. And I got everything off the trees, uh, the grill with the RT emblem. I'm curious to see how this looks finished. And then shifter and mirror. I did paint the exhaust system. So I did shoot those. So those are all ready. Um, I do this kind of stuff in batches. And I actually did like three cars with painting here console and you know same thing like here's the steel exhaust manifolds which these are the logs these aren't even close to right for what uh, a 440 rt would have but uh, it's more like the standard log that your regular passenger car 383 would have and not the ones that belong in this car uh, air cleaner is pretty cool it's the vintage like 67 68 style um doesn't have any snorkels though I can't remember what a Coronet RT would have. I don't remember if it had snorkels or not. I know um, other ones had the dual snorkels. Uh, sea bodies had the dual snorkels. But this one, just can't quite remember specifically. And some of the flat black wheel backs. And then the battery here. Which at least has got the right number of cells. So it's a 12 volt. But those battery terminals are just kind of vague. I think they're a little bit better than what the original kit had. And then, you know, this... Just some more of the stuff here. An actual power steering pump. It's kind of cool. The fan blade. There's an alternator, which I did strip the chrome off and painted aluminum. Um, not the most accurate looking alternator, but you know, the, just like the rest of the kit and this uh, blob of a carburetor. But I uh, painted it antique gold 
because a lot of the carburetors were gold. Um, these were more of a Carter, so they would be aluminum, but you really can't see this underneath the air cleaner anyway. Uh, but I just kind of painted it gold. Uh, the other mirror, got a couple of horns, and those are right there. And then I painted the wheel pins because it looks like these are going to be visible. So I was half tempted to just leave them white and just glue them in. But I realized I think those are going to be visible, so I painted those black. I uh, haven't done the wheels yet. Whoa, there goes some parts. Um, those look like they might be a little bit fun to detail. Done it before, uh, just time consuming. But uh, those will get done. And then it's got a pretty nice steering wheel too. But, you know, same thing. And then um, the rear axle here, which this is in the simple MPC design, although the exhaust is not molded to it. But it's kind of vague and simple in its detail as well. But I'll paint the spring steel, even though on a real car they were just painted black as well because they would assemble all the rear suspension. And pretty much kind of like how it is here, drums and all, just paint the whole thing black. And sometimes Mopar would paint the, the drum side of here red on some of their cars, um, but did that. And then I still got to paint the distributor tan, just trying to remember if 68 had tan distributors, uh, distributor caps. And then here's the washer bottle, I hadn't painted that yet. And one thing I did do is the taillights on this, the red was uh, a little weak and a little too transparent, but they were uh, molded in red. So I did airbrush them with some more stoplight red, give them another coat and everything. I had to do the 442 anyway. So I did both uh, 71 442 taillights in red, and I did these at the same time. But since they were already molded in a light red, I just did a few more coats to darken them up just a little bit. And I'll put the bare metal foil behind them. So um, not a whole lot of parts to this when it comes to building its stock. Um, there's a lot of parts in here, but because of all of the different versions of this kit that can be built with all the parts that are in here. So, um, looking forward to painting the interior and I'm really thinking tan. Um, uh, let me know what you think, uh, comment wise, as far as interior. Um, but like I said, I'm kind of staying away from white because my blue car has a white interior with black carpet and black dash. I like that combo, but, uh, black is a bit overdone. Black would look good on this. But I'm thinking I'm just going to do tan and do all of it tan, the dash and everything, um, and kind of dress it up. And I'm looking forward to putting the white wall, the skinny white walls on it. Um, so I'm glad these are in the kit and everything too. So this thing's uh, moving along, but I'll get this one and a few others clear coated hopefully this weekend or next weekend. And uh, I'll get to foiling and getting a lot more of this stuff done and getting the interior painted. So real curious on your thoughts on the interior color, but uh, that's why I painted everything else first and then I'll paint the interior last um, as far as this piece goes. But I uh, hope you like the progress on it and I really do hope that you you know, have this kit and you're enjoying it. Um, like I said, it's, a, it's got the vintage vibe to it, but a little bit more modern fit and finish. Um, so uh, a lot of pluses to this kit. It's not the, the greatest detail, but you know, being that it's based on 1968 tooling, even though it really isn't, uh, it's, you know, copying that vintage vibe and everything. So I'm really enjoying it, just taking my time and not really stressing the details, but having some fun with it. So thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments. I really do appreciate it. And you guys, please check out our sponsor, Hobby Nut Models. And, you know, if you want to pick up this kit, if you haven't already, uh, check them out on that. And leave me your comments and everything. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and if you're building this kit as well. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Saturday.